welcome to our refocus cloud tutorial i'm going to be filling out the refocus cloud in our 2022 dream planner this is our white marble i believe it's the horizontal layout that i have in my hands it's beautiful and wonderful and you need one of these so make sure you grab yours if you don't already have it but go ahead and open up that planner to the refocus cloud or open up your pdf if you're working off of our pdf and I want to tell you a little bit about this section of the planner. I'm going to actually be filling out one on my iPad and letting you see it here in the video if you are following along on the video. But years ago, 2014, I'm going to take you back to that time in my life. I was a mess and I was very overwhelmed. And I really felt this calling on my heart that there was more. God wanted more for me. Um, I wasn't living for him. I was just a mess in so many ways. And I knew that if I was going to pursue the dreams that he put on my heart, something had to change. Something had to change. And I was reading the book, The Artisan Soul, and Erwin McManus in the book, he gives you a lot of actions to do, which I think is so important important to not just hear it, but to go do it. And that's why the planner is so important. It's not just about hearing a good idea. It's about working, putting your pen to paper and then going and living out that, you know, whatever you're trying to execute. And so he said, um, I want you to create a list of all of your distractions, create an exit strategy from them and then execute it. And I was like, brilliant. <laughs> so I started bubbling out in a bubble chart all of my distractions and everything that was going on in my life, like every single thing I could think of from at that time, I was going out too much. I was partying too much. I was, uh, I had a lot of work. I had, it just wrote everything out in a bubble chart. And from there I decided, what am I going to remove? Because here's the goal of the refocus thought. It is to make space. And it's a, honestly, a great tool for de-stressing, um, but we want to make space. We want to delete our distractions and make plus signs for our passions. And if you want to have time for your dreams and for your passions and for the things you're really focused on, something's got to give. Something has to be removed. For us to grow, things have to be pruned. And sometimes it's not even like, bad things that have to be pruned like sometimes it's obvious like okay i've got to prune some fear or i've got to prune this you know extra glass of wine on on wednesdays or whatever but sometimes what needs to be pruned is something that like is generally okay but you need to make space for better we have to get rid of the good to have space for the better and so if you are going to do the dreams that god has put on your heart you have to become the person God has called you to become so that you can sustain the dreams. And in order for us to grow, we have to remove. And so that's just a little background of why we're doing this, why this is critical. And we're going to go ahead and get started right now. So open up to your refocus cloud. If you're following along on the podcast, um, it's basically a circle. And in the circle, there's four quadrants. One is passions. One is focuses one is distractions and one is obligations. And I'm actually gonna share my screen for those of you that are following along um, on the video portion. Here is our refocus thought, just gonna zoom in there. Our passions, our focuses, distractions and obligations. Okay, so obligations, let's start with our obligations. And what I like to do is I draw out like a bubble chart, like mind mapping, whatever you wanna call this. And I write out all of my obligations. So we've got taxes, depending on when you're listening to, maybe it's tax season for you, maybe not. Um, obligations, we've got the home cleaning, cooking. Um, what are the other big obligations we have going on? So just start to think about that, bubble it out, write it down here. Uh, grocery shopping, grocery shopping. I'm writing mine down as we're doing this. This is a working session. So hopefully you are taking time to work on this with me. That's the whole point of this. What are your core obligations? You probably need to go to the gym, taking care of our bodies, right? What are our other obligations that you have? Just map it out. 
um, and write it down. Okay, next we're gonna move on to, and if you need more time, just press pause. We're gonna move on to focuses. Be honest, in the next three months, what are you focused on? What are the big events coming up? Um, demands, people, issues, dreams. What are your big focuses? I'm gonna start writing out my big focuses. At the time of me recording this, my big focus is my new baby, I'm pregnant. You can't really tell in the video, but I've got a big old bump down here. Um, but yes, and maybe on the podcast, you can hear how uh, easily winded I am from just talking. <laughs> so we got the new baby. Um, we've got the new home, we're moving. So that's a lot. Um, we've got the summit coming up, big launch. So what are your core focuses that you have going on in this next season of life? We want to take everything that's swirling around in our brain and we want to put it on paper. And if you are following along with me in the video portion, you will notice how terrible my handwriting is. You're probably like, wow, the planner is so pretty. I had no idea Polly had such terrible handwriting. Well, I do want to say that writing on an iPad, which is what I'm doing, is trickier. And I'm also going to say that my handwriting is horrible in general. So I hope that this helps you feel less bad about your handwriting um, and helps you with any uh, perfectionism issues that you deal with because it's not about being perfect. It's about being useful and things are only useful if we use them. So your planner is not meant to be um, this perfectionism tool. It is a totalitarian, utilitarian, I think I'm using the right word. It's a useful product to help you have life transformation. That's the goal. It's not about perfect handwriting. So hopefully this makes you feel better <laughs> about your handwriting. Um, okay, so next we're going to go with passions. What are things that make your heart really happy? What are activities that make you really happy? What's something in your life that uh, maybe you haven't done for a while because you've been so buried with busyness? What do you love to do? What lights you up? What, what, and not only what lights you up when you think about it, but like what after you get done, you feel amazing. Like sometimes it's like reading the Bible. It's like, okay, I don't know if I'd call that a passion, but I know when I get done, I'm, I'm filled, right? And it's like, that that is a passion. That is something that we, is not urgent, but gosh, it is so important. So maybe think about things like that, like maybe a workout, right? Like, I don't feel like going to the gym, but after I get done going to the gym, oh man, that's so great. Or just taking the time to go on a date night. Um, it's a lot, you gotta get the babysitter, you gotta coordinate, oh, 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 oh. but like once you go on the date night, you're so glad that investment is so worth wild. So write down your passions. And the ones I listed out are, are mine. I'm going to put date night. I'm going to put, um, what else did I say? My gym class. I like to do bar. So I'm my bar class. That is my favorite thing to do. Art. I just love doing art. And so I've been able to do a lot of art with my daughter just to kind of have fun. And it's not as, um, it's more just free versus like I'm doing something really particular and being really meticulous with it. Uh, doing art with my daughter is just way more carefree and free, which is what art is kind of supposed to be in general. Bible study, I'm gonna put that in there. Maybe you wanna put like a vacation, like, man, I would love to take a trip or I'd love to go adventuring somewhere, family trip, laughing with friends. What are some of your passions? Take your time right now to write it down. And then lastly, if you're not finished, you can pause on this and can't keep going. Lastly, we're gonna write down our distractions. And this is one of the most critical pieces of this. Like the whole point I did this refocus cloud was to get to this part, which is writing down your distractions. I believe when you write down your distractions, you can actually gain power over them because the first step to eliminating something that isn't serving you is acknowledging that you're wasting your time on it. We have to acknowledge that we're wasting our time on something. We have to acknowledge that, you know what, this is not a good thing in my life and I'm admitting it's in my life. You have to admit it before you can get rid of it, right? Before we can deal with it. So 
what are your distractions? What are the things that eat your time? What are the things that steal your mind? Maybe it's an activity. Maybe it's a mindset. Netflix, social media, drinking, um, which drinking was a big one for me when I first did this because not only does it steal your evening time, it can steal your morning time, right? It can steal your, like, how are you going to do, this is what I, my thought process, imagine 20, I guess I was 26 year old Polly living in New York City, working as a um, sales executive. You know, if I'm taking out clients three or four nights a week, how am I going to get up and do my Bible study in the morning? <laughs> you know, like I'm exhausted and I had you know, a couple glasses of wine and it's like, that was something that was not serving me but I didn't want to own up to it because it was part of my job, you know, and I just kind of chalked it up to that. I had all these excuses. And sometimes we just make all these excuses for ourselves because we don't really want to change. And so this was, that was a catalyst moment for me. Um, but what is it for you? What are the distractions for you? I think social media is one that we all struggle with. I think, um, drama it could be family drama it can be drama on tv that we're just wrapped up in and we're wrapped up in the social media drama part of it too those can go hand in hand <clears throat> um it can be like self-doubt fear what are the other distractions that you are dealing with what are the places you go to escape what activities or thought patterns do you fall back on to escape? Self-pity can be one. All right, fear. Okay, so I've written mine down. You can see it listed there. And here's the step we're going to take. I want you to draw a nice big line. Whoop, I just went to the wrong page. Technical difficulties. Hold one moment. <laughs> okay. So I want you to draw a line through the middle of the page horizontally. So we're gonna separate um, the top and the bottom. So the top is now passions and focuses and the bottom is obligations and distractions. So hopefully you can have that line there. And so the point is we wanna fill more of our day, more of our week with the top part of this cloud, right? We want to try to eliminate or at least delegate some of the bottom part of the list, right? But some of this needs to go to therapy. Some of it needs to be uh, ruthlessly eliminated and some of it needs to be outsourced, okay? So let's go through those different things real quick. And maybe you wanna grab a red pen. I'm gonna change mine over to red. And let's start with the ruthless elimination. What are we going to ruthlessly eliminate out of this list? And I'm going to draw a big X over social media. And it was funny, as I was filming this today, there's a major outage on Instagram and Facebook. And I'm in a mastermind group right now with Stephanie Gass and Chelsea Joe. And Stephanie Gass has completely gotten herself off of Instagram. And her, she did 30 days without posting on her business account. And her business grew. And so she is helping people realize you don't have to do this to have a successful, successful business, which that can be a really good excuse for business owners, right? I've got, I've got to be on social media um, for my business. And so anyways, today, as I'm teaching on getting rid of social media, I can't even log on. And <laughs> it was like, wow, that's kind of telling um, so I'm in the process of releasing myself from a lot of this stuff as well. So social media being one, um, fear, let's remove some fear. Let's get out of the dramas. I'm just Xing over things I want to get out of. And then let's talk about delegation. What are some things we can delegate over on this list of obligations? Um, let's say I'm going to circle home cleaning and delegate that. I want to delegate grocery shopping. So when I can, I like to order um, grocery delivery just to save time. So that is that. And um, hopefully that helps you. Now go to the top of the page 
what is something you want to make more time for now that we are here? Put a heart next to the things you really want to make more time for. Bible study, bar class, date night. Those are mine. So this is the refocus cloud. We have to delete in order to add in what matters. So hopefully these X's and circles and hearts can help you have a little framework to make a tweak this week. What is your major tweak? And as you're filling this out, I would love to see you doing this. So make sure you take a picture, upload it to Instagram, share it with me. I wanna see that you're doing this um, and how it's helping you, of course. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, I would love it if you could leave a review and let me know if this tutorial has been helpful for you. If you have any other questions, you can reach out at hi at HoratioPrinting.com. I want to end our session by praying over you. Father God, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for this journey and for opening our eyes to some distractions that are holding us back from truly walking in the light and becoming who we're called to become, God. Will you please help us to see this cloud and to see clarity on what we need to remove, Lord, and what we need to make space for? You are such a good father. You've never stopped pursuing us and you love us. And we just are so thankful for you and the way that you love us and the way that you are so patient with us as we fail and fail and fail again. Lord, thank you so much for letting us be your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So you can watch all the other videos um, to keep setting up your planner and enjoy this journey of becoming who you're called to become in 2022. You are so loved and the best is yet to come. And if you are listening to the podcast episode, go grab your ticket to the Dreamer Summit. I cannot wait to hang out with you there and make sure you grab your 2022 dream planner before they are gone. You can use the code podcast VIP to get 20% off your purchase today. Okay. That's it for today.